have one opportunity to change the rest of your life, but it's up to you to choose when. How to become a millionaire step by step. This is $10,000. This is the amount of money I make every single day. You see these types of videos all over the internet. They're pretty hard to escape. These financial online gurus present you with the quickest way of getting rich and selling you the dream life of luxury cars, expensive watches, beautiful girls, lavish mansions, and so on. However, things never always go as these gurus say. Many have become victims of these get-rich-quick scams and struggle to get out of this nightmare and get any type of justice. As we say, not all heroes wear capes. Spencer Cornelia has made it his mission to investigate and expose these controversial influencers and fake gurus who prey on ordinary, hardworking people to get rich themselves. Here are the stories of the people who find themselves on the radar of Spencer Cornelia. When Spencer uploaded his video on Dan Locke, it was obvious the information he was about to deliver would create a buzz. And it did. Dan Locke is a 41-year-old Chinese Canadian who claimed to have jumped from being a debtor with 13 failed businesses to a copywriting multimillionaire, which he dropped to become a high-value sales closer, all within a couple of years. Dan Locke is said to have more than two dozen companies and millions of followers on social media who appreciates his rags to riches story by buying the 14 books he wrote. One person who isn't buying the charade is Spencer. But before Dan Locke gets humbled, a quick word from this video's sponsor. Are you tired of receiving those spam calls from unknown numbers all day? Everybody is. Fortunately, today's sponsor, Aura, can completely stop those spammers who want to learn more about you, like where you live. The fact is, data brokers make a lot of money selling your information to those annoying spammers. These brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them to, but they make it very difficult to do so. Huh? Let Aura handle it for you. Aura identifies the data broker giving out your information and submits opt-out requests on your behalf. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link, www.aura.com slash what happened. It's really easy to set up, too. Instead of having multiple different apps to get things like antivirus, parental controls, password management, identity theft, and more, Aura has them all in one place, and you get everything at one affordable price. It is really convenient how you can get all these features into one organized app. You can either let these data brokers keep profiting off your information, or you can go to www.aura.com slash what happened today to start your two week free trial. The link is also available in the description below. Spencer questions Dan Locke's legitimacy because during his investigations, he noted that Dan Locke lacked transparency concerning his businesses and had no significant business experience despite his claims of owning many businesses. Spencer also believes Dan Locke lacks any original ideas. He argues that Dan Locke simply read books on sales, copied whatever other finance experts such as Jordan Belford and Grant Cardone did, flew in private jets, drove Bentleys, and edited videos of himself charging $10,000 for a two-hour sales call just to create a character he can lure people with. Proclaiming himself to be a business consultant and be the best high-ticket sales consultant. He's created a persona centered around being the boss in the Bentley. Fancy cars, fancy suits, fancy living, private jets, you know, just the typical internet marketer. It's all an image to get you to buy into his BS. He's an internet marketer that gives vague business advice to get you to buy into his sales funnel so that he can sell you on his insanely overpriced internet marketing products. Then create and sell super expensive courses that are simply repackaged how to sell information people can get for free on the internet. Spencer explains that he spoke to ex-students who were part of over 2,000 people who paid $2,500, sometimes $10,000, to be part of Dan Locke's seven-week-long high-ticket closer program. After the initial program, they had to pay for the Inner Circle membership, which included another one-time cost of $19.95. Then $200 monthly for special access to Dan Locke's team and becoming closers in black. 
And as closers in black, they needed to take one more step into an innermost circle, the high ticket millionaire package, where they would pay $5,000 a month. At that point, Spencer reports that the ex-students left the program, having learned nothing about sales from Dan Locke. What I've seen, basically no one succeeds in becoming a huge sales success following the course. Everyone then joins Dan's cult in some form and starts selling his programs to the next batch of hapless kids who got sold on the dream of becoming a high ticket closer. This is similar sales psychology to MLMs. The customer is always made to feel like it's on them for not succeeding. The mindset of the top dog of the pyramid, Dan Locke in this case, set up an environment where the, they present the dream of becoming this wealthy self-made boss entrepreneur by buying into the system. You think you're buying a sales product, but what you're really doing is buying into a deeper layer of the sales funnel. This correlates strongly with MLMs. You initially buy your neighbor's protein powder product because they're nice and you bought into the idea that it's magically made from some natural organic buzzword 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 and that it will cure all of your anxiety and stress. Once you buy the product, then you get told about the opportunity to make a little cash on the weekends. Join my team and you can start earning money in your sleep. Dan Locke does the same thing. Buy the product and then join the team by entering into our inner circle. In the MLM and Dan Lok Pyramid, at some point you realize that the only way to recoup your money is to start selling the product to other sheep just to protect yourself. Dan Lok's ex-students may claim to not have gained much, but Ty Lopez was a marketing genius who knew how to use social media to his advantage. Ty, the man who opened the door into the YouTube course selling niche with his Here in My Garage ad. An ad that netted Ty Lopez between $75 million and $700 million within two years. Ty Lopez may have become controversial, but he knew how to run social media ads. Before social media fame, he claimed he owned many nightclubs that he sold. He then dipped into online dating, connecting millionaires with beautiful ladies. Using ads, he directed traffic to his site for a paid membership. The problem, however, according to Spencer, was clients' complaints that the service didn't deliver despite a high sign-up fee and that they kept taking money even after the subscription had been canceled. People would be signing up and then would want to cancel or refund based on their experience because they realized that it kind of was a hoax. And what a lot of the reviews, the negative reviews are saying is that they would not issue refunds or they'd be really difficult to reach. And so these people would get multiple charges on their credit card. And when refunds were demanded, nothing was done. With a network of failed dating companies linked to Thai, Spencer felt Ty was just using these fraudulent business models to enter different dating niches and simply changing the names while he cleared the bank. He made more money selling life insurance tricks, being a wealth coach, authoring, and as an uncertified financial planner. With this money, he entered into social media marketing, spending over a million in one week on ads. He created a $67, 67 step program for people to sign up for and kept reinvesting in paid ads. He invested the profits of those sign-up fees in newly acquired businesses, luxurious lifestyles, and raising of startups' capital funds. Even Spencer admits that if you want social media marketing to be your thing, Ty is the guy to follow. If you want to develop a large social media following, there's a lot you can learn from Ty Lopez. But again, he's just like most of these success gurus in that they're preaching vague business advice and you end up paying them for simple information that you can find on the internet for free. After Ty Lopez's controversies, he has since delved into acquiring businesses. Let's rephrase that into acquiring business brand names. He would argue that he and his partner are acquiring distressed businesses and reviving them by turning them into booming e-commerce businesses using, you guessed it, social media ads. What does he need from people? Investments. But for a few people, a few of you who are accredited, and match kind of the criteria of people I like co-investing with, I'm gonna send you the details. So just click the link below, swipe up, and uh, I'll let you in on something I wish somebody had taught me at 18. Because according to Spencer, he has fully captured the market of people looking to invest $67 in his 67 steps program. Now he is after the big fish. He is starting to buy businesses with his business partner, Alex. And if you're a big fish hoping to invest, with the history of Ty Lopez, you better be asking the right questions. Derek Moneyberg's history, however, wasn't something even Spencer could have prepared for. Derek, also known as Dale Bachowski, started at Walmart and went into property management before investing in the stock market. After a successful stint as a panel advisor for a self-help company, Derek Moneyberg decided to start Moneyberg.com. 
his wealth coaching company now worth millions of dollars. He would tell you that his wealth coaching is not for lazy people, but for those who have money and want to increase their wealth. Derek's coaching sells courses under three different upsells, Moneyberg Markets Mastery, Real Estate Riches, and Moneyberg Mentoring. Interested students pay at least $5,000 for a course. Spencer picked up this case when many people who paid for these costly courses and even more expensive boot camps came out and claimed that Derek barely showed up for the courses and the promised boot camps never happened. Some students also claim to have been forced to deliver testimonials about how good the course is or get booted out without refunds. But Spencer's deeper look into Derek Moneyberg's personal life reveals that the man had not one, but multiple criminal records, including obstructing police officers and allegedly committing domestic violence. Derek Moneyberg built his credibility by having numerous interviews with celebrities, sports personalities, and athletes. But of course, Spencer didn't buy it. And when he questioned the legitimacy of Moneyberg.com's courses, Derek Moneyberg tried to stop him with a $2 million slap lawsuit. I'm being sued for $2 million by a YouTuber, and I am so excited to get to talk about it. Spencer's personal investigation revealed that Derek Moneyberg committed perjury during their court proceedings. The public awaits the result of this lawsuit, which has already drained Spencer over $250,000. Derek is not the only person who sued Spencer after being called out. Kevin David, too, has tried to get his pound of flesh by threatening lawsuits against Spencer. Kevin made a name for himself as an entrepreneur who ran a successful Amazon FBA. He then decided he was good enough to write books and create courses for people to pay for. Step one, sell products on Amazon. Step two, sell a course on selling products on Amazon. Step three, start a YouTube channel with videos describing how people can make money online. Step four, create a Facebook group to funnel people into your products. Step five is to begin selling additional courses. Kevin had suddenly become a best-selling author, mentor, and coach. With Marketer Magic and Zonbay Software, Kevin truly utilized his huge social media following. Spencer reports that when Kevin saw the opportunity to hack YouTube CPM with the make-believe you can make quick money online scheme, he wasn't one to shy away from quick cash. Spencer pointed out the many coincidences that show that Kevin David and his team just straight up copied whatever the top YouTubers in the niche were doing. Kevin David unveiled his 100% complete Amazon FBA automation business, where he promised people unimaginable amounts of returns from businesses with zero risk. He and his team promised to do all the work while people just had to sign up with $40,000 to get them up and running. People pointed out the outrageous claim of the immaturity of such a business model, and Spencer rose to the occasion. Now we're going to play a quick game of spot the painfully obvious fake guru sales pitch. Real product that I sell and that I've sold thousands and thousands of units of. He allegedly sold thousands of this unit without realizing he couldn't even use the same product in the sales pitch. Did anyone else recognize that these are two different cutting boards? You can see I buy them right here for $1.85 each in bulk, and I sell them on Amazon individually for $34.99, which you can obviously see is a very healthy the profit margin. And Kevin is one of these guys who took advantage of the Amazon gold rush and positioned himself as an expert. Enough people bought what he was selling and I'm confident you're going to be shocked when you find out how much money he's made, which I'll uncover in a minute. Eventually, Spencer would be validated because the FTC took action to stop Kevin David from pitching what it called phony Amazon and crypto money-making schemes and demanded they return over $2.6 million to customers they took money from. Another person who did some Amazon business that caught Spencer's attention was Roman Cresto. Spencer took on Roman Cresto after he came across a lawsuit that was against Cresto for defamation and fraud. Roman Cresto is an entrepreneur and e-commerce expert who began his business with just one dropshipping store, but became the founder of an AI automated e-commerce business called Empire E-Commerce, which had 1,000 stores. The lawsuit reads that Roman Cresto and John Cresto took advantage of small business owners through the Empire E-Commerce LLC by enticing them into paying a lot of money for business opportunities that never came. Roman Cresto confirmed that the business was based on dropshipping on big companies like Amazon.com. 
you could just drop ship on amazon.com which already has tons of customers and traffic already and you don't need to do any marketing any advertising you don't even need to build a website all you can do all you have to do is register for an Amazon Seller Central seller account. He also said that their company went from about 150 e-commerce stores to about 1,200 stores, and people were paying $30,000 each in upfront fees for his company to run their e-commerce stores. But Roman confirms that the packages they ran went up to $185,000 for those who could afford them. Spencer reports that according to the lawsuits, in view of mounting public exposure and legal liability, the Crestos decided to sell their company of over 2,000 employees for $100,000 to an unwitting victim who had no idea of the problems on the ground. When I first read this complaint, I had to do a double take. Uh, did I read that correctly? $100,000 for a company with 750 clients and 2,000 employees? Am I missing something? Enter Daniel Cohen, the unwitting victim who asked the Crestos if there were legal issues the company was facing, to which they replied there were none. Spencer explains that it was after the transfer of ownership had been done that Cohen discovered that the company he had bought wasn't what he had been told it was. Daniel Cohen, the buyer, remember he didn't know that many customers were having bad experiences or there were any lawsuits. After he bought the company, he had access to their email. Daniel searched their email for fraud, scam, lawsuit, lawyer, refund, multiple emails matched the search terms, the inbox was riddled with an overwhelming number of customer complaints. The complaint then lists out examples of emails from disgruntled customers. They scammed me for well over $525,000 total. I would like to request a refund for my initial investment of $120,000 immediately. And when Cohen decided to liquidate the company, it was discovered that Empire e-commerce owed employees thousands of dollars and had lost millions of dollars belonging to investors. Daniel Cohen, the new owner, signed on behalf of Empire e-commerce. The Schedule A document indicates the company owes former employees around $50,000. Section 5 is the customers who are owed money. It isn't a small amount. There are 17 pages altogether totaling what has to be multiple millions of dollars in lost investor money. The document then includes the pending litigation, which appears to be four yet to be finalized cases. From my perspective, it seems like the Crestos didn't disclose the pending liabilities of their company, which may be why this eight-figure company with hundreds of clients and employees sold for only a hundred grand. Spencer reports that Roman and John Cresto have moved on, with Roman promoting a new website called automators.ai, which helps you learn how to create your own automation store management company. It should be noted that Spencer has not been able to get comments from any of the major parties involved. The next victim of Spencer was Austin Zeeland. Austin's major deal was investments in as many businesses as possible, something Spencer didn't feel too good about. Austin started as a realtor, then became a consultant at Microsoft before leaping to Forex trading, where he developed a Forex trading software that automated his work. It was so great that he decided to share his invention with the world. His mission? To create 1,000 millionaires by introducing them to his investment strategies to create passive cash flow. Here is where Spencer has an issue with him. Austin Zeeland is selling these 20 plus investments he uses, such as private jet and exotic car rentals, BDC mining, and oil wells, claiming they have high ROI and zero risk, which every real investor will tell you is incredibly false. To impress people, Austin Zeeland presented himself on social media as having connections with some big names, which earned him a huge following on Instagram. It paid off as usual. People rushed to use his algorithmic trading forex, which he licensed for between $17,000 to $50,000 depending on duration. The upsell included his six-figure mentorship program, where about 400 people who can afford to pay $40,000 a year are currently mentored by him. A Reddit group that has been tracking Austin's activities for months raised similar suspicions to Spencer. Worked with him. He's a scammer, 110%. Do not give this man your money. Run far, 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 far away. Do not listen to anything his salespeople tell you. Not a word. None of it is real. Com Mirza was much like Austin, only with a slight twist. He's an influencer, entrepreneur, investor, mentor, and philanthropist, as it says on his website. It also states that he has helped hundreds of people make millions of dollars in their companies through his business mentoring programs, masterminds, and events. Voted top 40 under 40 young business leaders across the Middle East and has hundreds of thousands of followers. 
With multiple businesses, including real estate, transport, and technology under his belt, it's no wonder he was known as the $500 million man living in the Burj Khalifa before he was arrested for fraudulent activities. $500 million? Spencer talked about a few red flags pointing to Kam Mirza's illegitimacy. He pointed out Kam Mirza's lack of transparency and depth when questions were asked concerning his businesses. Soon, there were reports of him running a string of get-rich-quick schemes, including Ponzi schemes, fake real estate projects, and a worthless cryptocurrency coin named Habibi coin. With these schemes, he lured thousands of people to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars. Calm, his brother Rocky and other family members would continually start new businesses and hype their success. Claiming huge income and valuation numbers for each company, they would get investors to send them more money. Tom eventually created a real estate-backed cryptocurrency labeled Habibi Coin. The Ponzi scheme got exposed and investors were left with empty wallets. Someone had to pay for Com's exotic sports car. He and his brothers also used the leverage program investment scheme to promise financial freedom within a year to members who paid a sign-up fee of $5,000. He was eventually investigated after someone who lost over $100,000 reported him to the authorities, who, after doing due diligence, arrested him. And the court, after finding him guilty, ordered him to pay fines, sentenced him to jail, and eventual deportation. Talking about alleged illegalities. After deep diving into Ethan Duran's exotic car rental business, Spencer decided to review Ethan's exotic car rental academy course. Ethan himself says in an ad for his course that it's possible to start an exotic car rental business within the next 30 days. Some of his ads further state that people are making six figures with exotic cars without ever owning them. Spencer, however, believes that Ethan's course gives the car rental industry a bad name because it is much more expensive and lacking in quality. So much so that a person who had applied and paid $5,000 for the course reached out to Spencer to inform him that he had to ask for a refund because of how low quality the course was. But he never got the refund. Spencer is not shy about his dislike for Ethan's marketing strategy, which promises people they can own an exotic car without money. He believes it preys on the desire of most young men who would easily jump at such an idea. And to justify his dislike, Spencer asks a professional's opinion on the idea of renting out exotic cars without money or credit. Here was his response. If you're a licensed rental car company, there's no problem with that because you're properly insured and sometimes we share cars in our network. But when you're a broker joker, they have no license, no insurance. So if they rent your car off the platform or to some regular individual and they crash it out, your insurance is not going to pay for it. You're going to have risk, uh, liabilities, and damages. It's definitely not something safe to do. Stay away from being a broker. Spencer then revealed that Ethan's course is very superficial. After having checked the course with the professional in exotic cars on set, he says Ethan doesn't really understand what a legitimate car rental business looks like. Here's Spencer's breakdown of what Ethan teaches in his course. This is illegal and opens everyone up to massive liability. What Ethan teaches in his program is borrowing someone's exotic vehicle under the guise that you're a legit car rental business and renting the cars to others. Spencer also points out that Ethan's ads say he has over 600 students meaning he has cleared over $3 million on selling his courses alone. And Spencer couldn't be more pissed that people paid $5,000 for this. But those aren't the only people he is pissed at. Even people who claim to be billionaires aren't safe from his anger. Spencer did some investigation on Joe Jardinsa, who claims to be a billionaire running a company that owns and operates 47 other businesses and makes $23 billion a year in sales. Jojar was at the time promoting a new crypto coin called Tweeba, which he said would monetize the act of doing a favor to others. He pointed out that Tweeba would do the following favors. Favors walking your dog, favors big cups of tea, favors taking your parents, your relatives to the airport. All those are favors. Spencer was immediately skeptical when he saw Jojar appear on the Cash FX Forex trading webinar as Cash FX's new partner. I think we've got a really special gentleman on here today. Uh, we're working very closely together, and uh, you know he's a serious entrepreneur and uh, philanthropist, and why he has chosen to partner with us. So Cash yeah. FX Forex had promised its investors a 15% investment return. Even major well-established platforms were promising 13%. Spencer had already uploaded a video on CashFX's problems with a lack of a physical office. 
And according to him, CFX was an MLM Forex trading Ponzi scheme. Jojar at one point had the goal of mentoring 1 billion people, and the platform they were using to achieve that was Cash FX. Just so that anybody that doesn't know, we, we as a company or as an individual, we fed 1.1 million people during the pandemic in the UK. Um, and you know, this year, we're going to mentor 1 billion people um, globally. And one of the platforms I want to test, and we are testing, and it's working for us, is CFX. And Spencer says he doesn't understand why a billionaire would ask for money from people he wants to help in his billionaire mindset mentorship program. This guy runs around claiming to be a billionaire, then charges you for a billionaire mindset mentorship program, and then by default will push you into his downline for an MLM Ponzi scheme. Unless I'm not reading this correctly, this is exactly what this guy is doing. And from the beginning of the video, it was obvious Spencer was not sold on Jojar being a billionaire. So he shows this. He has about three to five employees associated with the Athlone Group, even though he boasts that he has 10,000 employees. I did a search for everyone listed here and none are associated with Athlone Group. Best I could come up with is Michael Rich, who did one project for Athlone a long time ago. Definitely not a senior management team member. At the bottom of the page, we see a Kazakhstan address for Athlone Group LLP. If you do a search with an info clipper for businesses with the name of Athlone Group in Kazakhstan, nothing appears. There's no mention of this company anywhere on the internet from a legitimate source. The only person promoting this company is Jojar himself. This company check UK search yields nothing of importance or even active for Jojar Densa. I think we've found a charlatan, my friends. Using the Times UK's full list of the richest people in the UK, you won't find Joe Jardinsa anywhere. Given that there's a very finite amount of billionaires on the planet, as you'd expect, there's only so many billionaires in the UK. This list was the top 250, and the final entrant has an estimated net worth of 600 million or so. If Joe Jar really ran a company doing $23 billion in sales, he would be on this list. Finally, Spencer exposed a well-liked financial guru, Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki is the founder of Rich Global LLC and the Rich Dad Company, two for-profit financial education businesses that use books, videos, and mentorships to teach beginning entrepreneurs what the world of real estate looks like. According to Spencer, these educational tools are simply paths Robert Kiyosaki and his team have constructed to guide people into a sales funnel where they end up at the very expensive seminars they have planned. When talking about Kiyosaki, I have to begin with these seminars because they're so scammy and they prey on the weak and vulnerable, and I think it really hurts his reputation. It is true that Robert Kiyosaki's books have a wealth of information and are available if you can afford it. However, as Spencer claimed, he does everything to bring you to make a decision that causes you to buy into his upsells, especially with his videos, where his teaching isn't anything special or particularly insightful if you're hoping to get anything new. Since it is now just a ruse to drive traffic to buying his products and attending his seminars. And Spencer will tell you in depth. His seminars, on the other hand, are worthy of a 0 out of 50 and should not be attended for any reason ever.